Welcome back. With just a few days to go for the G20 summit in New Delhi, security and cultural preparedness for the G20 team remain strongly in focus. I caught up with India's G20 Presidency's Special Secretary, Muktesh Pardeshi, on the expectations from the upcoming summit and began by asking him on the key themes and arrangements made for the meeting. Well, you know, the, the theme is Vasudeva Kutumbakam, uh, which in English is being conveyed through three phrases. One earth, one family, one future. So the, all the sessions are organized in a manner to reflect this theme. One earth, one family, one future. Could you give us a sense of how many heads of state, heads of government have confirmed participation? All, all, except uh, one or two which uh, has come in the newspaper. For instance, head of state of uh, um, Russia is not coming. It will be represented by foreign minister. In case of uh, China, head of government uh, is uh, representing China, which is premier. In case of Mexico, uh, it's represented by their minister of uh, economy. Uh, rest are coming at the, the head of state or head of government level. Similarly, uh, most of the international organizations are also laid by their uh, respective heads. Could you give us a sense of the number of delegates uh, per delegation? It's uh, uh, very difficult to um, uh, quantify. Um, they, they all have their own uh, you know, requirements. Each government has uh, its own setup. And how many people um, travel with the president outside, they, they have their own national pr protocol. S on average, you know, uh, having 150 to 200 people per delegation is, is, is very much expected. But in case of international organizations, they'll be uh, smaller compared to national delegations. So it depends from country to country. It depends on their own uh, national protocols, their security requirement. In uh, some cases, uh, the delegation size is quite huge, mm. and uh, we have to accommodate uh, because their requirements of, uh, are of a different uh, label. Right. So it's very difficult to uh, uh, But what I can share with you, uh, including media, we have received uh, almost uh, 10,000 uh, registrations. How many journalists out of them? Initially, uh, I think 3,500 uh, people registered. How many will actually come? It has to be seen because in the initial phase, people register, but uh, due to several, you know, financial regions, logistical region, people are not able to make it. Mm -hmm. But we are prepared to uh, host uh, some uh, 3,000 uh, international and national uh, media people. Right. Uh, I would like to ask you about. Uh, the cultural experience that we would like to give uh, to the leaders? Is there some cultural experience which will take place on the site? There are uh, two things uh, definitely uh, happening. One is uh, exhibits on digital transformation. So there are different exhibits uh, in Bharat Mandapam, also in the media zone, also in the country in the offices zone. And then there are cultural exhibits. In terms of cultural exhibits, there is a cultural uh, corridor where artifacts which uh, have come from member countries will be uh, displayed in a beautiful manner. So all countries have uh, given their um, artifacts. Uh, there is a uh, area where there will be digital immersive experience to understand um, the, the cultural traditions of uh, different G20 countries. Apart from this, we have created a crafts bazaar, which is not only exhibition, mm -hmm. where our people can sell, they are selling products. So this crafts bazaar is being participated by almost all states mm -hmm. and union territories. Mm -hmm. We have more than 30 stalls. Mm -hmm. There will be five, six live uh, demo uh, points mm -hmm. where our artisans and artists will be, for example, doing Madhubani painting or something from uh, explaining from Rajasthan. There will be live uh, instrumental music. 
uh, and f like uh, playing somebody will be playing sarangi mm. sitar or or a santur uh, people can buy products mm. from there the whole idea is the delegates are busy and also the media people they may not get time to go out and do shopping so uh, here is an opportunity that they can see the exhibit and also pick up something uh, as a uh, as, as a memory so of the heads state. of state will also travel through these uh, well, exhibitions that, that depends on mm. their time and inclination right. uh, if they want to uh, visit a crafts bazaar if uh, it's conveyed through their country delegation will be able to take care of it uh, will the prime minister be receiving some of the heads of state uh, heads of government at the airport oh. uh, no no i'm sorry i i didn't mean Uh, uh, the airport at the, the conference venue at Bharat Mandapam, as the protocol is there, each head of state and government will be received by the Honorable Prime Minister. And what about the airport? Airport, uh, the reception will be done. Sometimes the Prime Minister breaks protocol and uh, you know, goes this, to receive this delegates. A, uh, this is a, I mean, they are coming for a multilateral uh, event. Uh, we have a protocol, um, standard protocol in place. what i understand is uh, representative senior officials from mea will be definitely there to receive it also depends on what time uh, their flight um, mm. is arriving so uh, we'll follow the standard protocols that mea has in place right i'd like to ask you about the gala dinner as well a lot has been said about it give us sense of uh, what kind of an affair would it be will it be a simple one an extravagant one uh, what will be on the menu the invitee list i would be uh, well it should be uh, like any other uh, head of state uh, the event uh, that we have been uh, hosting uh, there'll be uh, definitely focus on um, how to present our culture and also culinary tradition which is diverse mm -hmm. definitely there'll be uh, a focus on uh, usage of uh, millets because this is uh, the international year of millets and there has been a uh, lot of attention on on promoting the usage of um, the millets in our daily uh, meals mm -hmm. so naturally a few things uh, should be there and uh, otherwise th see the whole idea we have to allow leaders also to converse mm -hmm. so uh, the cultural program will be soft not interfering uh, with uh, their conversation allow them a little quieter uh, ambience so that uh, you know what has happened during the course of the day uh, they can uh, reflect upon them mm. uh, they are busy people they do not get much time to uh, uh, you know interact with mm. uh, many uh, leaders and a multilateral setting like g20 presidency becomes important for them to you know develop personal rapport and and make conversation so uh, we'll create an ambience which is uh, calm and where conversations uh, can flow mm. uh, at, at the lunch which will be a part uh, of uh, session 1 so it'll that will be more of a working lunch mm. uh, uh, for others uh, for example in the delegates lounge Uh, delegates area or the media they'll be more um, uh, i mean it will be done in a buffet uh, style because we have thousands of people right. what is important is uh, we will uh, try to encompass diversity that we have to offer in the area of cuisine mm. so diverse cuisine mm. street food and usage of millet these are broadly some of the uh, key uh, aspects that any key items that you could tell us that i may not be able to share because that the final decision rests with the okay. um, the prime minister office and this, some changes keep on uh, happening okay. uh, but we have uh, the pragati maidan they have hired itc mm. to do the catering and they are very reputed um, hotel chain mm. so we expect uh, good service mm. and uh, good food Uh, how many bilaterals could the prime minister have now that's a the good question it all see um, prime minister has to uh, chair the meeting mm. so a lot of time goes into because he is personally responsible for conducting the meeting so he his time his first priority is to conduct those sessions mm. uh 
so depending on the time mm. that uh, he would have, mm. uh, certainly uh, some bilateral meetings will happen. Usually we receive uh, a request from all because that's a kind of courtesy to seek uh, meeting with the host. But it depends on, on, on the time available. Mm. And also he's in, in Jakarta, he'll be returning um, tonight, I believe and then uh, straight uh, you know in some bilateral meetings uh, tomorrow so uh, the time which will be available for receiving uh, leaders in bilateral setting might be limited right uh, my final question to you would be will we be able to have a communique because from all the looks of it it seems that uh, a joint communique will be very difficult and we will end up with a chair summary no, that's not the, the outcome that uh, we are looking uh, at. Uh, everybody is working hard. Uh, it's not only the presidency. All uh, people who are attending actually the Sherpa meeting in Manesa, they're working hard to uh, come up with an agreed um, outcome uh, document. Um, that's the objective of each uh, and every presidency. Uh, differences of opinion, differences of uh, approaches. It's a part of diplomatic uh, event, diplomatic meeting. Mm -hmm. Nobody, you see, they all bring in their national uh, approaches. They all bring in their national priorities. They have national take on international issues. So those things will happen. Mm -hmm. But it's the role of the presidency to bring them together mm -hmm. and, 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 and distill an outcome document. Right. I think India is in a, uh, in a position to uh, do that. Mm -hmm. So in spite of what you were saying, that may not be the correct uh, description of the efforts but which are, are going into... But are we sticking to the Bali uh, statement, sir, Bali declaration and the wording on the Ukraine war? Or are we, are we okay with some mm -hmm. modifications to accommodate there Russia are, and China? Know, see, what happens, there are... Uh, that happened last uh, November. Uh, I know some delegations would like to uh, reflect updation and uh, more, you know, correct reflection of what has happened during last, uh, uh, you know, eight, nine, ten months. So they will bring in those um, suggestions. Uh, what I know that Sherpa and uh, the Troika and all they are engaged in having different formulation to so that um, all are satisfied mm. and we agree to have an ambitious outcome document. Wow. You know, we have achieved so much mm. on uh, development issues during our presidency. And G20 is a premier forum for economic cooperation. Mm. So that's our, 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 our approach. G20 should focus on what has been achieved during nine months of the presidency right. and take it to the leader summit and have an ambitious and decisive outcome document. All right, uh, so that was the Special Secretary of the G20 saying that he is hopeful of a communique. There are different formulations of the communique being worked on. There have been changes to the Bali Declaration by some uh, delegations. So let's see what really happens at, at the end of the day, whether we can come out with a communique or not. That's a wrap of this special broadcast. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.